Live from Joe's mom's basement, it's the Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and let's get reproductive. Wait, that's probably not right. Oh, it's productive. Honest mistake or maybe wishful thinking. Either way, today our panel breaks down the best productivity hacks picked by the internet. Our panelist of honor or contractual obligation is none other than host of the Earn and Invest podcast, Doc G. Plus, the woman who puts the pro in productivity, Paula Pant. And straight from the People's 2021 Sexiest Man Alive, it's Paul Rudd. Nah, he couldn't make it. He's filming yet another Ant-Man. Here to try and take his place as our own OG, who we think sometimes as the Can't-Man, but same thing, right? But that's not all. Halfway through the show, I'll share my clean-cut trivia question that's sure to take our panelists by storm. And now, a guy who knows something about hacks, it's Joe Saul C.I. Let me be the first one to say happy weekend to you, everybody. I am Joe Saul C.I., Average Joe Money on Twitter. Doug, nice open. Good way to get the weekend started. How are you, man? Uh, merci beaucoup. <laughs> That's good. That, is that foreshadowing? Are you foreshadowing something that we may talk about later? Just the only, it's the only foreign language word I know. Let's go ahead and say hello to our panel who's going to talk about productivity and hack and productivity this fine Friday. Mr. OG is here. You're a productive dude today, aren't you? Hmm. Today? Yes. Yes. I have done three things today. <laughs> he said begrudgingly. <laughs> he wanted to do two, but he got done my with third. three. Yes. Because he's so productive. And the woman who is always productive on a Friday, I'm sure, Paula Pant is here. That's giving me a lot of credit. But today I have been unusually more productive than What's usual. What's up with that? Usually more productive um, than usual productive. So the Department of the Redundancy Department would like a word with you. <laughs> yeah, precisely. <laughs> I think precisely is the good word there, Paula. And here back for a limited engagement again, Mr. Doc G's here. How are you, dude? I'm good. This might be the most productive thing I do all week. <laughs> That's fantastic. Ooh. If that is, I feel bad for you. Anybody who's listened to a Friday episode of the Stacky Benjamin Show knows that um, we have an hour of good productivity, but then we're done. So that's that's it. This is and that's how way. I like it. An hour a day, an hour a week. That's perfect. It is fantastic. We're going to go through this list of 50 productivity hacks. Then we're getting our panelist productivity hacks because you guys are all very productive people. We've got Doc G here. Uh, we've got OG. We got Paula. We got Doug. We're talking about hacks, productivity hacks. So let's move. This piece comes to us from 50hacks.co. Yes, appropriately named. And uh, they have three things on here. They've got their top hacks, the newest hacks, and the hot hacks. And you can go there and vote if you want. We'll have the link in our show notes, and then things get upvoted. So, uh, Paula, let's start with the number one thing on this list that the Internet has voted on. Twenty, Almost 2,200 people at the time of this recording this say that showering in the morning is the number one hack on their list. Is that the number one hack you're looking like? Uh, no. Not even remotely. First of all, I, I personally, I mean, to each their own, I have never been a morning shower person. I want to shower at night because I've, I'm, I've got sunblock on, um, as one should, and you want to get the sunblock off your skin before you go to bed. So nighttime showering, best way to go. Anybody think, Doc G, you think uh, shower in the morning? Gray hack? So, so I tend to shower in the morning because it wakes me up, but I'll tell you those days that I don't shower in the morning, I smell so bad. Everyone leaves me alone. I get a lot done. I mean, I, no one, no one bugs me. They stay away. I'm good. The don't shower hack works for you. Oh, gee, you ever do the cold shower thing? Cause you know, you see all the medical studies that say the ice cold shower kind of gets your uh, body moving. Yeah, no, no interest in that whatsoever. Um, yeah, that's not me. I'm I'm a double shower, like at night and in the morning. Shower with people. That that's would be just called a thirty minute. That shower. would be great too. Um, <laughs> but but um, 
No, I got to do the I got to do the wake up in the morning thing right away unless I'm going right to the gym, which is <laughs> never. And um, um, but then I'm like, Paula, I don't want to go to bed stinky. Like I'm, I just I got sunblock everywhere, like she said. So I do like, though, OG sticking with you, the number two one on this list. Don't multitask. I think that's a great like anti hack, isn't it? Well, I mean, I guess they say statistically you can't do it, right? Your brain can only think of one thing at a time. And every time you try to change subjects, you kind of, you know, lose lose the efficiency that uh, that you're on. So I, I, I believe that that's a good one. I don't uh, I find I, I find that one difficult, though, to, to buy by. I mean, I get that I should do one thing at a time. But I have a very active brain like uh, Paulette, who Paula filled in for you for nine months. We both have ADD. And it's just hard to turn it off. Are you able to, to stay pretty focused on a single task? Oh, uh, I am. I cannot multitask. If So if two tasks both demand the same skill, like they both demand cognition, um, absolutely not can't multitask. But if there are two tasks that demand different skills, so for example, walking on a treadmill and listening to an audiobook. I can walk and listen at the same time. <laughs> Don't like to brag. I was, but... I was thinking smoking a cigar and drinking bourbon. But yeah, I could do that at the same time. That's, that's definitely something I'm good at. One of those might be slightly healthier than the other one. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, Doc G, you have trouble multitasking or, or single tasking? So here's the problem. I grew up multitasking because as a doctor, I was always talking to one patient and getting paged and doing paperwork and doing four things at once. But I'll tell you, it is really distracting and it still is the bane of my existence because even though I do part time doctor work, I'm still always answering texts on my phone and I find it's just really disruptive. So I'm looking forward to the day where I don't have to multitask because I think I could concentrate more. Getting some movement in is next on the list. I'm going to take out. There's a couple in here that are advertisements and how those got voted up. I kind of talks talks about the quality of the site. But Doc G, sticking with you, get some movement in before starting work. Go for a walk, short bike ride. I don't know for me if it has to be before work, but getting movement in periodically during the day, I think sets my brain at ease so that I can do some of the harder work. So I know, for instance, if I go take a nice walk, then I can sit down and do some of the more thought work to, let's say, writing or thinking about something that's much more difficult. So it kind of slows my brain down in a really good way. I do find that uh, it, the same for me. I'm able to focus much more if I have uh, if I have uh, some exercise in me before I start. OG, you talked about going to the gym first thing in the morning. Is that a good hack for you? Yeah, no, not in the least bit. Um, I am 100% not a morning person in any way, shape or form. Um, I, I get up around the same time every day, which is right at the crack of about eight o'clock. Um, and, uh, and, but I do do the walk thing, you know, probably four days a week. I'll, I'll string together, you know, two and a half, three miles of, of just out, uh, you know, shuffling along, but, um, I'm an afternoon gym person. That's, uh, that's my afternoon break. And this is, I mean, study after study shows that you need to know yourself, right? I've seen that, that thing that says you are either a Robin, which is most people up super, you talk about crack of up at dawn. Most people are what they call Eagles, which is people between seven, seven and eight, seven and eight thirty. And then there's uh, owls, which are the night owls. Uh, who are very much known for creativity, but knowing yourself, I think really helps. But for me being a Robin, if I don't, if, if I don't exercise first thing in the morning, I won't do it. Like I got to do it before my brain wakes up. Paula exercise, big, big thing for you. See, so what I'm, uh, what I've just started doing now that I'm, I'm done with school and like restarting my routine. I've been thinking about this a lot actually, cause I want to nail the routine now that I'm in that period of transition. Yeah. And what I've come to is my cognitive energy peaks first thing in the morning and then it also peaks later in the day but there's this what inverse bell curve where in the middle of the afternoon um i've got a you know huge slump so my strategy is working out during that mid-afternoon oh. slump um so basically the way that i'm trying to the, the routine that i'm trying to build is uh wake up at seven work from eight until about noon and then 
take a break from noon to three, maybe noon to four, where I just like work, have lunch, work out, do whatever. And then from four to seven or four to eight, be back on it again. That's funny. My hack for that time, because I won't work out then. I I know myself. I've I've Mm -hmm. tried for many years to work out during that slump. And I don't. If I have a break there, I will say, okay, I'll go to the gym tomorrow. I'm taking a nap. And I'll take a nice, like literally 25 minute nap and I'm, and I'm good. If I sleep for an hour, I'm in big trouble. That's good for your health too. Yeah, it is. But then I don't work out. Right. So I got to get the workout Mm -hmm. in and it's, it's both not, not either or, but for me, for me, the, what I like to do during that afternoon slum, I schedule my meetings for then. So I have to be in it. Like I have to, I have to kind of slog through it. If I'm in a meeting with someone, I will work and I will get stuff done and I won't even feel the slump. But if I'm not, then I feel the slump, the slump in a big way. Uh, Dr. G, you're, you're, mm. you're nodding your head. What's your, what's, your, uh, what's your hack for getting through that mid-afternoon slump? So I try to do moments of intense work followed by off periods. So depending on when, depending on the day, but yeah, the kind of early afternoon, I'm not so great. So I'll do intense work in the morning and then I'll definitely give myself a few hours off there. So I, I, I think that's kind of the easiest way to be focused and thoughtful all at once and then just kind of let your mind go and relax. That's funny because people, you know, people talk about the Pomodoro technique, right? This uh, work for 20 minutes at a time and studies show we can't, we don't focus for more than 20 minutes at a time anyway. You ever try that, OG? What's your hack for that? I've never heard of that ever, but, but trying to keep, trying to keep meetings to, you know, 45 minutes, I think is, is, is pretty well, pretty well known. You know, you get past, you get past an hour of a speech or something like that and it's gone. Is there another one on this list, Paula, that really lights you up that you saw yourself completely agreeing with? Um, I like the one about uh, batch your emails, you know, don't don't answer them too often. It says ruthlessly pursue zero inbox, which I disagree with, but I like the other component of it. Batch your emails, you know, when don't live in the inbox. When do you batch them? Oh, once every 10 months. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I haven't gotten back to you. <laughs> I see in 2021, you sent me an email. Oh, you th- there, there was an opportunity. You wanted to hire me as a speaker two years ago and pay me a hundred grand to tour with Taylor Swift. And I missed it. <laughs> I see in the, the email that you sent me, uh, you were saying we're, we're looking forward to 2020, which we think is going to be a great year. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, it was. Thank you. <laughs> but, but, but on that note, you know, the reason I asked you that, Paul, is because I'm sure you've heard, seen this yourself, too. Like, it's a mistake to do your email first thing in the morning because you're working on somebody mm-hmm. else's agenda, not yours. Right, exactly. And the way that I uh, think about it is there's, there's inbound and there's outbound, right? Um, inbound is like that deluge, deluge, how do you pronounce yeah. that? Yeah, of what everyone wants from you. And it comes through email, through WhatsApp, through text messages, through Instagram DMs, through Twitter. It's just like, bing, bing, bing. You know, it's never ending and from every venue. But then there's what you want to create and put out there in the world. And create is kind of a a lofty term. So it might just be that you want to create, quote, quote, unquote, create a couple of emails that you want to send out. It might be that you want to create a piece of writing, you know, like it could be something creative or it could just be like some task that you want to tackle that very well may be in your inbox. But one way or the other, do the outbound first. I have a difficult time with that, though, because when I go do the outbound, I see the inbound and I find myself, you know, I see myself cheating and looking. And so I try to batch those two later for when I do the inbound. I, d- I go into email all at once because if I go in, it is going to be a cesspool no matter yeah. what I do. Oh, I, I have a uh, an an app that hides my inbox. Oh, send that called... to me. Well, yes. Yeah, oh, are we going to tell everybody? Is this? Oh, is yeah. This, is this okay. a podcast where we do that? <laughs> it's called Inbox When Ready. Mm. Wow, that is cool. So it's like it's like a Chrome extension. That's I think f- fabulous, Paula. Why don't you like the uh, Inbox Zero idea? Oh, that just sounds like so much work. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, it sounds like an enormous amount of work. And it also sounds like at a certain point, 
um, feeling productive rather than being productive. Mm. Faux happiness because I've got, I, yeah. like it's, it's like on December 31st every year I file email bankruptcy and I just mm. delete all of the emails from the previous year. Bye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was, here that was me, the yeah. advice. Yeah. Advice I got OG from uh, a coach. I actually got a coach from coach.me. You see this company mm -hmm. all, all over the place and it was just coaching in box zero. And I thought I wanted it. Very first thing this guy did, his name was Marshall did was all the emails that are more than two weeks old, just delete them all. Cause you would have done something about them if they were. And I, I, yep. and I went, no, no, I can't. And then I did. And it was fantastic. And nothing happened. And yes, I'm, I'm still yep. here today. Uh, OG, which one, uh, let's stick with you. Which one lit you up? Which one do you find yourself nodding your head to? Well, uh, before this, I arbitrarily selected number 17 as the one, uh, that really spoke to me without even looking. <laughs> so what's number 17, Joe? <laughs> what is it, OG? <laughs> so tell us what it is, Joe. <laughs> what it is, uh, what is it, OG? We're going to make number him actually 17. look at this. Number 17 is slow-mo your life. Whatever activity you're doing, slow down your movement. You'll notice an immediate calming effect. Your brain starts to process things better. Okay, you that still one's... like it? Yeah, I mean, I think this kind of goes to the multitasking thing on a little bit, right? Like, if you're kind of doing the, like, what's the phrase, kind of be where you are? You know, how many times do we start doing stuff or we're with somebody or we're, you know, whatever it is, we're like hanging out and you're, you know, you're kind of looking across the room or you're at an event and you're having a conversation with somebody and you're just wondering who else is around the corner that you get to talk to or something. It's like, just be where you are, kind of the stop and smell the roses type of thing. I think, um, I think we'll make make your life a lot easier for sure. That was a great hack for me that uh, technology companies are going to hate. I turned off all notifications. Mm -hmm. All notifications are off. And and I get, did you guys get inundated? I get into, you got to turn on your notifications. You're going to miss this and this. I'm like, yep, I'm going to miss all of it. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll miss all of that. I don't, I don't love that one. OG number 17, but I certainly like the one right below it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It does need to be started. You and I get coaching from the same organization, strategic coach, and they talk about the 80% solution. Don't wait yeah. until you've envisioned it hundred percent in your brain. Cause you'll never do anything. Get it 80% then hand it off. Like just, yeah. let's just get it moving. or hand off the 80% and then you only have the 20% that's left. Yeah. You know, either way. Yeah. Yep. Just, just, just get it going. Mom always says, don't look perfect be the enemy of good. And I think that one definitely resonates with me. Uh, Doc G, which one spoke to you? So not, not to, to throw shade at the conversation, but stop obsessing over productivity hacks. The truth of the matter is, I think we actually have to give ourselves no, no, no. a little grace. Number 51 is the one that I liked on the <laughs> one through 50 list. One, for God's sake. No, but I mean, on some level, um, I think a lot of us got to the place we are by being super efficient. And occasionally in life, you have to let it go and realize that it's fine to do something a little bit inefficiently. Um, and that... That's okay. And sometimes when you stop and smell the roses, other opportunities or things come along. And so I actually connect very much with that one. Paula, you and I have had this conversation a lot that in, in both the Stacking Benjamins community and the Afford Anything community, we just see so many people that are trying to opt. OG, you and I have talked about this a lot too. We just see people all the time that are, that are trying so, they're so worried about optimization, they're just missing all the fun right in front of them. Right. Right, exactly. And and sometimes optimizing creates unnecessary additional complexity, which then only creates more of the problem that you're trying to avoid. Totally. I couldn't agree more. I think it's a great place to leave this first half. Second half, we're going to throw the rest of this in the trash. I just want to hear your productivity hacks. We're going to take a, a nod from Doc G. And go, you know, we're not going to obsess with that list. Doc G, we're going to obsess with a different list. What do you guys like as productivity hacks? Uh, no more anti-productivity hacks, Doc. That's the only one you get. But before we do that, at the halfway mark of every Friday episode, we have a trivia competition between our three frequent contributors, which is OG, Paula, and Len Penzo. And uh, Doc, you are playing on behalf of Team Penzo, and that means some good news and some bad news. Which one would you like first? 
Give me the bad news. The bad news is you have to guess first, which <gasps> means... I'm going to anchor everyone. Darn for, it. For but I'm going to anchor them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this for, is the problem. I anchor them way off. For people that have never heard Doc G on this show as our, as our frequent uh, guest, uh, he tends to guess uh, slightly different than what the answer is. Slightly, <laughs> slightly different. But the good news, though, Doc, is that you've got 10 points for Team Penzo and OG with seven and Paula not in last with seven as well. Still, we are halfway through the year and you still not in last place. I don't know what the hell's going on. Fantastic. Yes. We're tied for second. What I'm doing here for Len, Len is, for what I'm doing here for Len is I'm giving the little guy a chance, even yeah. in the score up a little bit. <laughs> I don't. Well, I hope not. I hope you're going to play <laughs> b b play this uh, play this hard. By the way, I want to do a shout out to TJ. TJ is the guy. Whenever uh, a guest comes on, and you guys have all been on with people that ask this, do we do the prices right rules like we used to do? And TJ wrote me just to say, "Hey, I'm the guy who is in Florida who said that he didn't like it, and you keep calling me Danny." And then you realized you were getting my name wrong, so you just called me Florida Man. He's like, you can just... <laughs> he said, you could just keep calling me Florida Man. So, TJ, yeah. I realize you're not Danny now. Thank you for outing yourself. And I, I promised OG we'd just get him some swag or a book if he, uh, uh, for, for, as an apology for maybe calling him either one of those things. Okay. Doug? Sure. You owe me like six apologies, and I haven't gotten a well, shirt yet. You know, I mean, that's because we've been friends for so long. It just it's, it's built into our relationship, I think. Oh, I think that that's the deal. Okay. Also built into our relationship is you have the trivia question for everybody. So what do we got this week, Doug? Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. And today we're talking about the 50 best life hacks in the world. And since we're on the topic, there were way more than 50 hacks during the French Revolution. I think that guillotine could do 50 an hour. What, too soon? Come on. It was just like at OG's house when he comes out in his underwear in front of his kids. They called it the reign of terror. And that's when thousands of people, including nobles, clergy, and even a fellow revolutionaries, were arrested and given the off-with-their-heads treatment, including King Louis XVI and his let him eat cake queen, Marie Antoinette. Well, I bring this up not just because of the hacks reference, although that's pretty awesome, but because today Today is the anniversary of Bastille Day, which marks the storming of the Bastille prison in 1789, an event that marketers have decided symbolizes the French Revolution in a more positive light than the guillotine. Smart move, French marketing people. This truly is financial trivia because the storming of the Bastille was fueled by economic grievances against the monarchy like high taxes and food shortages. I understand their struggles because I'm dealing with my own economic shortages right here pay up joe oh, that got hot <laughs> yeah sorry i got a little carried away there the people want to be heard though in fact that's just what the french wanted on bastille day the attention of the oppressive monarchy and maybe some guns to arm their cause but guns aren't the only thing they found stashed in the bastille my trivia question is how many prisoners were in the bastille when they stormed it I'll be back right after I write down my demands. I got a crayon around here somewhere. And how do you spell cream brulee? That, that's just, yeah, I want that stuff. Cream brulee. So good. Cream brulee. Uh, Paul, have you had cream brulee? <laughs> uh, you know, I will avoid the temptation to correct uh, to correct the pr pronunciation. <laughs> it, uh... but it's impossible to answer that question. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, start off with Doc G answering the question. A different question then, Doc. How many how many prisoners were in the Bastille? So I told myself if I didn't have any idea that my answer was going to be 1,512 before I even knew the question. And so I don't really have any idea, but I like that number. So 1,512 prisoners. 1,512 locked in. And because uh, OG finished ahead of Paula last year, that means OG goes second. Boom, 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 boom. How big were prisons back in the 1700s? That's the, really the question. Um, hmm. I'm going to 
many cubits? I'm going to say, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> this is so dumb. 6,419. 6,519. My, my, my answer is dumb. That's what I was saying. My answer is dumb. Uh, 6,419. Uh, what was your number again? 6,419 or 6,519? Well, now I want to know why that matters. <laughs> <laughs> it matters. Just need to know. 6419 is what I said. Six. You sure you want to go with 6419? <laughs> Say is that your final answer. 6419. We'll lock that in. Paula, you got uh All right. Man, you got a little wide field goal there. Yeah. So, uh, so Doc G, your, your it was 1512. Was that yours? I'm going with 1511. Paula takes the lower. You actually think it was yeah. less than 1500 people. Yeah. You know, when I heard the question, the number that popped into my head was 84 for no reason. It just, that's just that number just popped into my head. So I figured I would capture the downside. Again, Paula, I tell you this every damn week, but you've gone with your gut every stinking week and it hasn't worked yet. <laughs> yeah. But you just keep going. So maybe, maybe, uh, who knows? Maybe you're, maybe you're right Insanity this time. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. <laughs> and she's going to practice it today. Yes. All right. Uh, those are our answers, man. They are all over the place. So uh, we're going to give you the answer in just a couple minutes. Doc, you started off with a number just over a thousand. What was his, what was his answer, Doug? 1512. 1512. How are you feeling now that Paula took the number below you? All right. So I skewed a lower, so I would not be surprised if it was less than that. But I went with my gut too. And I like 1512. It sounds like a good number. It feels good. Yeah. Uh, OG, you're over 6,000. You're significantly higher than Paula. Paula's original thought was in the 80s. I, I don't. <laughs> I have no not, comment. Not, not feeling great. And Paula, after Doug wanted to know if it was 6,400 or 6,500, you kind of avoided <laughs> that completely. <laughs> well, I, I just think that... Prisons probably didn't have that much capacity. Well, we're about to find out because, Doug, I think you got the answer to this thing. Who's going home with a win this week? Hey there, stackers. I'm oppressed employee and cake eater, Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. And today we're slicing through a discussion about hacks and being productive. Three words that basically sum up the French Revolution and the guillotine. I know my history. I saw Les Miserables, Les, Les Miserables, something. Today marks a big day in French history and is known as Bastille Day, a day when the French people were fed up with food scarcity and taxes and got together and said something like, I'm just just make something up top of my head. We're not gonna take it. We're not gonna take it. Anyway, you, you know what I mean. Then they proceeded to Jean-Claude Van Damme the hell out of the doors of the Bastille prison, finding both guns and inmates. My trivia question was this. Just how many prisoners were in the Bastille when it was overtaken by the people? The answer? Well, as you know, you, own, you don't have to be right. You just have to be the least wrong. And we had some very, very big wrongness <laughs> these answers. Lots of wrongness. OG was off by just 6,412. Doc was off by 1,505. Paula was off by 1,504 because the answer is there were just seven prisoners in the Bastille when it was stormed. Yes, seven. Look, I'm no warden. That's Joe's department here. But it seems like they could have just rented them all an Airbnb for a hell of a lot less money. But they probably lost their heads and overpaid on that huge building instead. So congratulations to Paula. Paula. Incredible. Does this mean I'm tied for first now? No. No. <laughs> oh, no. 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 Breaks. You have Done. eight. Len still has ten. Why? All right. Well, I'm firmly in second. Why bother with only seven prisoners? Like, couldn't they find something bigger well, and more grandstanding I, than to I, bail out seven so prisoners? Actually, the, no, that was part of the was thing, the guns. Uh, Doc. The, no, the thing was the guns, but also because they were really upset with... Um, 
wait like the uh, monarchy wasting money. The Bastille actually held like five thousand two hundred and eighty prisoners. It's like a mile of prisoners. There you go. And I. And that was a joke. They, so it held 5280. They knew there were only seven in there, and it was a representation of the excesses of the monarchy. So that's why they picked that building. And, oh, the guns were a nice side benefit. It's amazing that Doug can't pronounce creme brulee, but he can tell us the back history of the Bastille. Just, I slept through a just, lot of history classes, just, and some of it sunk just in. Just incredible. <laughs> Something else incredible is that the second half of this conversation is brought to you by DepositAccounts.com. Doc G, you know what happens when you go to DepositAccounts.com? What happens? I have no idea. Well, you go like this. You put in depositaccounts.com. You hit return like I am now, and we're slightly ahead, so you're going to want to go check it yourself. But the national average on savings accounts is 0.41%. The top 1% of savings accounts paying 4.41% as of this recording. CDs, national average, 347 Deposit accounts says top 1% averaging 5.4%. You do a lot better on savings cds checking and money markets if you just let them compete head to head see what the top one percent is you'll find them all at depositaccounts.com. all right you're going to find here in the second half of this discussion that we are talking not about this list but about your favorite things to stay productive paula when we talk about productivity your best paula pant productivity hack you know i think um delineating when you're working and when you're not having some some firm boundaries around that um i think that uh that that can help you know you, it helps you focus when you're at work and then turn off when you're not uh and some and there are various ways to make that happen it could be that you have a dedicated office that's separate from your home i think that's ideal um it might be that you have just a dedicated space in your home that like all you do when you're in that space is work um it could be specific times of day uh it could even be like an article of clothing like the, these are my work pants you know um but uh whatever it is i think there needs to be some some containers uh that demarcate i'm on i'm off well oh gee i know you second that one right i mean you've even got different days of the week that where you do different tasks i feel like there's such a great joke there about these are my work pants and i'm trying to trying to really put it together like the fact that i'm wearing pants today means i'm working <laughs> <laughs> check it out otherwise i would be pantless otherwise it's uh, the reign of terror again <laughs> otherwise it's the reign of terror all over again um yeah i mean we talk about it in free days and 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 focus days uh are, are types of you know different types of 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 work times um I also have the space and and as a signal to me when I'm done, I don't you know, everybody thinks I close the door so the kids don't get in or the cat or something. No, it's for me to say I'm done for the day. I close the door and and, you know, it's the old old school, you know, the shopkeep like locks the door and walks home. And that's kind of like, you know, that's kind of my signal to myself like, OK, I'm done for the day. I'm not going back into this room. I don't care what happens. It's funny, there was a mentor I had a long time ago who said the laziest solution you can come up with is to expand the time box. Just take that box of time, I'm going to work on a task, and I just make it bigger. And and next thing you know, it's just all consuming, and you're getting next to nothing done. Actually, the better the better hack is to shrink the time box, because then you find your efficiency in that. Uh, uh, yeah. Doc G, your favorite hack? So I create different environments which put me in the zone for the things I'm about to do. So for instance, I have my environment in which I podcast, a certain place I sit with the mic in front of me, with the lighting just so. And when I create that environment, I find that it takes my brain to that place where I'm do a really good job at doing that thing. Another thing, for instance, is if I'm writing, like I have a specific desk and a place I like to write. And so I found that by creating these different environments for activities that I really want to be deeply concentrated in, if I recreate that environment, it gets me there immediately to the point where I can be very productive right away because I, I'm in that environment. I've created that environment for myself. So it's really easy to slip in and out of doing kind of major work. That sounds like, is anybody else thinking of Doc right now, like Sheldon from Big Bang Theory, where he always had to sit in the one specific spot and nobody else could be there? <laughs> and it's because that spot had the best view of and all of that stuff. I Doc G's got I'm his chair. You got Doc. your chair. Do you tell yeah. the family that, Doc? 
Yeah, no one else can sit in this chair. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This is dad's chair. <laughs> well, that's, that really, though, OG, is the same thing you're really saying by closing the door on the space, right? Kind of what Doc G's saying. You've got your spot that you do the thing, and then you leave that spot. Uh, yeah, kind of. I, I do move around a little bit, d depending on the environment. You know, I'll, I'll work from different places in the house because we work from home. And, and you know, but podcasting is always in the same place, uh, obviously, in the basement. And then, um, um, but other stuff, you know. I'll sit outside or do whatever. So I'm not, I'm not the uh, in the zone type of type of person. But I do always have music on, so that's kind of a that's a trigger for me also, like something something in the background. I have um, I have Doc thinking about what you said and how much that resonates with me. That I have different spots where I do different type of work, and then if I'm still not getting it done, I just can't get my brain to work. I will break that rule and go work from somewhere else on purpose. And I find often that'll get rid of the block mm -hmm. that I have too. So I totally do what you're talking about. And then I break it on purpose on a, on a, on a bad day. Is that why you go to movie theaters all the time in the middle of the day, Joe? Right. You working at the <laughs> that's, movie that's theater? Right. Breaks the block. I go, working. I go, I go work in the afternoon to become unblocked. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, OG, your, uh, your favorite uh, productivity hack? Sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Sleep is my favorite. It's my favorite thing to do. Almost. <laughs> my second favorite thing to do. <laughs> After podcasting, of course. Yes. After podcasting, uh, of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, second ish favorite thing. My first ish favorite thing. But, you know, it's. Uh, we 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 spend so much time especially if you're creative you spend so much time you know always kind of on and you have to have a rhythm to to you know when when it's time to shut it down and you know from a from a uh health standpoint we know that sleep is a super key component to uh longevity um having that pattern of like it's kind of always the same you know my phone goes off at eight o'clock like in terms of you know it goes on do not disturb at eight um at 9 30 i get ready and go to bed you know it's like this is the same rhythm of the day and when it gets kind of fouled up along the way you can feel it you're you know your 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 body isn't right your mind's not right you know there's all the all the domino effects to that and so if you want to have a great you know, if you want to have a great day or a great week, you got to, you know, you got to set that up. And, you know, you see people who have their work schedule during the week and then on the weekends, they stay up till two in the morning or something like that. It just it just takes forever. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is this is my, my travel microphone. Apologies. If you also can't keep it up. <laughs> Ouch. Thanks, Paula. That's exactly what I needed today. Was that from We're you? We talking about OG oh, not being in a in the basement so well and in, and he just knocked over the pile of books. I appreciate that. Um, um, anyways, so yeah, I I'm one way or the other basically is what paul said so <laughs> uh paula does it surprise you that that when i asked all three of you and and, and I, I know all three of you well enough to you are three incredibly productive people you get a lot of stuff done but everybody's stuff paula was not about being productive. It was about shutting it off between sleep and and mm -hmm. having the time box only be so big on your end and Doc G having I've mm -hmm. got these places where I work and the places where I don't. Does that surprise mm -hmm. you that all three of you focused on not being productive? Hmm, that's a good observation. I think I think what that speaks to is um, the notion that, uh, as you said, Many people think that productivity is simply putting in more hours uh, because hours are an easy metric. They're quantifiable, right? You can track you can track it um, and and therefore you can kind of pretend that uh, that that's what matters. But I think when you focus on being results oriented rather than being hourly oriented, then the game changes. And so, um, the focus on shutting it off uh kind of it's it's the they're all tactics that get you to think in a more results oriented manner rather than in a time oriented manner let's talk about that a little bit because that speaks to preparation and i'd love to know how each of you prep for a great week for me the key is sunday night 
Sunday night, if I'm going to have a great week, I sit down and I plot it all out in my head and I'm not thinking Monday morning. You know, Monday morning, I'm already, I can just get in there and start doing it. Doc, for you, what's the, what's the preparation key to being productive? I think there are a few things that make me productive and happy throughout the week. One is that I have certain unmovable time commitments that make up the structure or framework of my week. So I know that there's certain things I'm going to be doing. For instance, every Thursday, I have a meeting from nine to 12. And so knowing that there's these guideposts to the week actually is, is feels very good to me because then I know where the unstructured time is. So I like to have these moments of work, but then also have lots of unstructured time because I think as we were talking about before, it's actually when you turn it off, I find, especially hopefully as someone, I define myself as a creative when I turn it off is actually when I come to some of my most interesting thoughts, ideas, and processes. It's when my brain is kind of wandering and I'm not being quote unquote productive when I come up with my best ideas and then I can then fit into working on those during those productive time periods. Oh, gee, how about for you? Uh, How do you prepare to be most productive? Hmm. That's a really great question because I do no preparation for it. I knew that you knew that, which is uh, uh, funny that you asked that. But but, um, I, I particularly don't um, pay any attention to anything on Sundays because of the fact that I want it to still continue to be a free day. You know, I want it, I want that day to be, you know, clear. Um, I just do what other people tell me to do. Um, like doc, I've got the different time blocks of time. Like, okay, I know that, you know, we're going to do the show at this time, or I know that we're going to have client meetings at this time, or I have one-on-ones with team people at this time, but the rest of it is pretty well open for, for other people to tell me what to do. And, and that, and that's intentional because, you know, doc, like you, I think all of us have a, a, a bunch of creativeness. And if we've got the space to be creative, that's where we, that's where we do our best work. Our best work is not doing the thing. It's thinking up the thing and then handing it off to somebody else to do the thing. And so we have to have that space to be able to think up the thing, basically, whatever it is. And then, you know, and then assign it out to, you know, to other parts of the team. So, um, so my best use is not to be sitting at a desk pounding out emails. It's it's to be thinking up stuff like that's the best use of my time. Yeah, but you're the reason I asked you that actually is just in my experience, long term working with you is that your preparation then and you had it in your answer and for people that didn't hear it. Your preparation is surrounding yourself with the right people. Because you've you've got people that can uh, set up that agenda in a way and you've helped them set up the agenda in a way that you can make sure that you're as productive as, 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 as possible, which really for the leader of an organization, I think is super important. You're only going to go as far as, as as those people around you. And and obviously that's that's deliberate. Well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we're here. And that's why you guys are there. We all just serve OG. It's exactly what happened. If more of the world knew that life would be a lot easier for everybody. Yeah. It's almost like, Doug, that uh, we were having a holiday party in my house one year when I was a financial planner and uh, the spouse of uh, someone that worked with me, I was telling him about just how I had the cat trained because I knew when the cat wanted to go outside. I knew when the cat wanted to eat. And the dude guy, Rick, looks at me and goes, no, dude, you're trained. The cat is not trained. He's the cat's trained That's you. Exactly. I'm like, right. oh my God, you're right. Which OG has trained us, Doug. He's trained us. It's horrible. God, I didn't even I, feel I it. No. Uh, Paul, how about for you? Preparation. You know, there's. I guess there's a difference between what I would like to do and what I actually do. What I actually do is nothing. Um, what I would like to do. Uh, is at the beginning of my week, I, and I actually have, I have like a handful of monthly planners that have kind of sat empty. Um, but at the beginning of my week, ideally what I would like to do is sit down and chart out like what are the major things that I want to accomplish this week. And then, you know, that's it's that starting with the end in mind and then backtracking from there. All right, what do I want to accomplish each specific day in order to get to that end of week goal? So in theory, that's what I would be doing if I was, you know, a better version of myself. Are any of those planners from 2022? Uh, yes, in fact. Let's I meant 2020 also, oh, oh, not 2022. Here's, 
here's November 2022. And then <laughs> let's see, we got we got May. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I can just reuse them this year. Yeah, Fine. that's right. Every what? Fine. And then how often till the dates repeat next year where also? like the fourth of a month is on a Tuesday? Like if you just wait long enough, <laughs> you'll have that. And then you just X out the 31st because that month doesn't have the 31st. Cross out May and put July or whatever it is. And you're good. Yeah, it'll cycle back. And then I'll, tot- I'll totally miss that it's leap year. <laughs> you know, it's the true circle of life. Circle of the calendar life. Yeah, Doug. When it's when it says it's Sunday in the planner, but it's really a Tuesday, she just doesn't show up to do anything that day. Because planner says it's Sunday. It's my it's my Sunday. Yes, every day's like Sunday. To quote Morrissey, uh, I think that's a great. When I'm doing Morrissey quotes, it's time to end the podcast. So let's let's go ahead and find out what's going. To Paul has no idea who Morrissey even is. Is that Jim Morrison? <laughs> different guy i'll <laughs> okay. explain it later but for now let's find out what's going on where you guys are uh we'll have our special guest doc g go last oh, oh what you got going on this weekend man hmm good question uh, um not a lot of any lot thing anything anything couple weeks up in uh up in michigan and and uh are now uh i think the family is still up there I believe and uh they haven't reported in lately so i think they're still okay um and then me and me and my uh oldest son Does that so suspicious, Doug? he's like i left my family in northern michigan i haven't heard from them i have no idea what might have happened some some of the family you didn't realize this is a, a true crime podcast yeah, that's, right. yeah. that's exactly right the good news is we're all going to be famous they're like here's when he went on the podcast and pretended he had no idea <laughs> I don't have anything else to add. <laughs> now he feels like he's, he's on a witness he's, stand and he better stop talking. He pleads the fifth. That's, yeah, that's it. Paul, what's happening at the Afford Anything podcast? Oh, the Afford Anything podcast. Well, you and I answer audience questions, Joe. And we have just started putting videos on YouTube, like actual videos, videos. We've, we've uploaded audio to YouTube for years, um, but we are now finally starting to upload actual videos of our actual faces. So, Which is our version of the Reign of Terror, right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, Internet, these are our faces. Here it comes. Yes. Only at the Afford Anything podcast and our YouTube channel. Well, like you said, exactly. YouTube channel's been around for a long time. but Yeah, exactly. With- YouTube.com slash Afford Anything. With video. Doc with G. Video, now with video. Thanks, thanks, thanks for. Can you see that splash? Now with video. Uh, <laughs> Doc G. Thanks for hanging out with us again, man. I'm. It's always a pleasure to be here. Always a pleasure, Joe. I'm. Uh, I'm excited that even though you were off by over, well over a thousand on your trivia answer, you only lost by one. Like and that's, and that's to better be, than usual. That's something I'm like, very, very proud of. I'm usually off by hundreds of thousands, so <laughs> just a few thousand here and there, no big deal. It's fantastic, my friend. What's going on at Earn and Invest? Well, actually, this morning I asked Chad GBT, and this is what it came up with. It said, join us for thought-provoking conversation that empowers you to earn and invest wisely, shaping your future while making informed decisions today. So that is what we are doing on Earn and Invest wow. right out of the mouth wow. of Chad GPT. I couldn't describe it any better. We also have Ava Jurgens on this week. She started at the age of 15 investing in real estate, bought her first property, set up a complex deal where her parents paid for a certain percentage and she paid for another percentage. She's now 18. She makes over six figures in her own digital marketing company. She finished high school at the age of 17 and is not going to college. An underachiever. (laughs) <laughs> that, that's obnoxious. <laughs> Nobody needs well, that. And, and, and her world. goal is to be a billionaire. Well, she's she's on the track. Most definitely. She's on the track. And that's a conversation with Ava on the Earn and Invest podcast. That's that's fascinating. I, I would love to hear how she uh, yeah. bought stuff at 15. It's amazing. Well, you know how you can hear about that, Joe. Yep, not on the Stitcher app. <laughs> Don't go to the Stitcher app. You can listen to Earn and Invest on wherever you listen to fine podcasts.
Last thing, Stackers, as you listen to this, after this weekend on Monday, the 17th, I will be in Minneapolis. And I still, as we record this, because I'm about to leave, so we're recording this a little early. Um, I don't know where, but we are having a meetup in Minneapolis at either 6 or 6.30. This is very, just drive around <laughs> town. Great. You will eventually it find it. <laughs> There'll be Just a great. drunk guy p- pouring himself out of a taxi cab at a hotel. He'll right definitely to me, go, want Joe, to. Uh, it, either it'll be posted in the basement. You'll hear about it in the 201 newsletter. If you don't want to join our Facebook group and you don't want to get our newsletter, then just email me, Joe at StackyBenjamins.com and say, where is it going to be in, uh, in in Minneapolis? So with all those specifics, join me in Minneapolis. And on Tuesday, I will be somewhere in Des Moines, Iowa. It's easier to, to search for me in Des Moines, Iowa on Tuesday because uh, it's not nearly as big a city as Minneapolis, St. Paul. So, uh, yeah, drive around Des Moines. Uh, but again, I will uh, I'll let you know. Joe, Joe, you have like a, a red and white striped shirt on because you're doing a, we- a Where's Waldo. I will. I'll be the guy out in front of the microbrewery spinning the card, you know. <laughs> yeah. Th- this is how I got invited to every party in high school. The party is to the party's just going to be in that western Somewhere. part of the neighborhood. Somewhere. Yes. You'll find us. You'll probably find us, Doug. Don't just yes. We'll try. post it in the Facebook group. We will also have it in the two hundred one newsletter. And uh, like I said, email me Joe at stackingmentions dot com if you're anywhere near Minneapolis or you're near uh, Des Moines. So that is what's going on with me. What's going on with all you guys? We'll also link to everything that uh, is going on at Afford Anything and Earn and Invest on our show notes page at stackingbudgements.com. All right, Doug, you got it from here, man. What should we have learned today? Well, Joe, first, take some advice from our panel of so-called experts and use productivity hacks to save yourself time and accomplish your goals. Second, can't decide which life hack will have the greatest impact? Take a lesson from OG and just arbitrarily pick number 17 from a list on the internet. The point is, just get started. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be an incremental improvement. Had the big lesson? (laughs) Joe's mom doesn't think it's funny when you celebrate Bastille Day by kicking in her front door. Next year, she suggested I just get some macaroons and wine instead. Kind of wish I thought of that. Thanks to Doc G for joining us today. You can check out his amazing podcast, Earn and Invest, wherever you're listening to me right now. We'll also include links in our show notes at stackingbenjamins.com. Thanks to Paula Pant for hanging out with us today. You'll find Paula's fabulous podcast, Afford Anything, wherever finer podcasts are found. And OG and Joe, and yeah, thanks. Whatever. You know, Joe, this part of the credits is so important to me, I had to go put on my favorite shirt. Let's do this. This show is the property of SP Podcasts, LLC, copyright 2023, and is created by Joe Salcihai. Our producer is Karen Repine. This show was written by Joe Salcihai with help from me, Doc G from the Earn and Invest Podcast, and Lacey Langford from the Military Money Show. Kevin Bailey helps us take a deeper dive into all the topics covered on each episode in our newsletter called The 201. You'll find the 411 on all things money at The 201. Just go to stackingbenjamins.com slash 201. Tina Eichenberg makes the video version of this show. Once we bottle up all this goodness, we ship it to our engineer, the amazing Steve Stewart. Steve helps the rest of our team sound nearly as good as I do right now. Want to chat with friends about the show later? Mom's friend Gertrude and Kate Yunkin are our social media coordinators, and Gertrude is the room mother in our Facebook group called The Basement. So say hello when you see us posting online. To join all the basement fun with other stackers, type stackingbenjamins.com slash basement. Not only should you not take advice from these nerds, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before making any financial decisions, speak with a real financial advisor. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and we'll see you next time back here at the Stacking Benjamin Show.
I hadn't been to a wedding in a long time. I've been to a couple of receptions, but hadn't been to the ceremony in a in a while. But we're getting into that age where all our friends' kids. Uh, Hold on, might be adding <laughs> Is there an earthquake in New York City, Paul? Uh, deal, dealing with a mic that won't stay attached to a table. Uh, BRB. Can't get the mic to stay up. Okay, got it. Yeah, about this <laughs> uh, if the mic stays up for longer than four hours. <laughs> might, might have to do something different. Anyway, uh... The officiant of the wedding was the bride's sister. She did an incredible job, but it was very, it was very casual. But the, but she really did do a great job. She was but more of an MC. One thing that surprised everybody. She was more that, of an MC. Yeah, she was. She she really sort of rode that line right between a little bit of like I got my officiant thing on the internet for you know. But then now I'm your sister. She went back and forth. So she balanced that well. And there were a couple of little stumbles and she handled that with grace. So that was all good. But she did have the bride and groom do a shot of vodka hmm. on the altar. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sure Jesus, if Jesus thought, approved. <laughs> is this, well, it was non-denominational, but I thought, is this what it's, is this what weddings are nowadays? <laughs> and then they wrote their vows, which everybody does now. And Instead of vows, you know, I pledge this or I will or I won't or whatever. It was just sort of like the here's the story of us, like you'd write in the back of a yearbook. <laughs> it's like I, you know, that time we went to the Kentucky Fried Chicken was awesome and I knew I loved you when and it was just it just felt different. Mm -hmm. So Josh with his ice water made me think of love. The vodka love and, and, and needing a shot of vodka to get altar. married yeah <laughs> yeah i um i heard about a wedding you know that you know the tradition of icing someone when you hide a smear off ice in yeah. a random place and then yeah, whoever finds it has that. to yeah i don't know this so tell I, me more i heard once about a wedding where the woman had it tucked into her garter oh. belt the bride had it tucked into her garter belt so at the moment that the, the groom like lifts up the, the skirt to like pull off the garter to throw it into the crowd, he gets iced. That's funny. Did you, did, Actually, did you see, by the way, Paula, yeah. that uh, Carrie in our Facebook group, The Basement, Spindrift now mm -hmm. has a hard Spindrift. Speaking of Smirnoff Ice, there's hard <gasps> Spindrift now. Her face like I know. The world you just shifted have, for you Paula. You need a 12-step <laughs> program, Paula. Wow. <laughs> if you're that excited. The official drink of the Stacking Benjamins podcast. Well, it's actually, I think, more afford anything, right? Because I sabotaged you that day at afford anything. So it truly is, really, we're mixing metaphors for people that uh, don't know what's going on. I, I one day horrified Paula because I brought out a spindrift and I did all this advertising for spindrift, which was not um, appreciated by Paula and also not, uh, she, it's not she wasn't getting paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> and the more she hated it, the more I went on about the delicious flavor, <laughs> and about the, the the wonderful taste. And so Steve Stewart at a at a at a conference we went to brought us like spindrifts every hour on the hour the entire conference. <laughs> yeah, I, and then when we went on book tour, a handful of uh, brought fans spindrift. brought us spindrifts. Yes. T Tucker iced me, my oldest son, but he, I think he was like a freshman in college or a sophomore in college. He iced me, but after he'd been driving my car. So all I knew was he'd been driving my car. I get in, look in the glove box for something, and there's uh, ice in the glove box. And I went off on him because I didn't <laughs> know. Like, it didn't occur to me that my kid was icing me. I kind of knew what it was, but I didn't put two and two together and think, oh, he's playing a practical joke. That, that was just his quick thinking. That wasn't, that, wasn't, that wasn't a thing. He was the one that started it. He just he's like, it. dear Internet, let me tell you how I got out of get my kicked by my dad i never thought of that josh <laughs> that is a great point that could have just been him getting yeah. out of it dude no dad no 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 this was a joke i was well, playing well, on well. you you're supposed yeah. to drink it that, 16 year olds around the country exactly learning they, something you know right? yeah that's exactly how the conversation <laughs> went to and i was reading him the riot act and he was like but no but 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 no 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 you guys you guys have uh, seen people get iced have you ever seen somebody get umbrellaed Doc G and I saw a woman get umbrellaed at a restaurant in Chicago, uh, what, just over a week ago, like a week and a half ago. What is that? What is umbrellaed? Getting umbrellaed is where you have your drink and it doesn't have an umbrella in it, and it, but it's super windy out, 
and the umbrella at the table next to you comes over and slams you in the face when it gets picked up by the wind. Yeah, like that. It almost almost impales you, but thankfully it didn't. Yeah. Wow, that, that woman was woman was not happy. <laughs> she get a free drink. Talk about Doug deal. not being happy. Yeah, when he got iced, that woman was very unhappy when she got umbrellaed. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, one more thing. Sorry, uh, because of YouTube, when um, and uh, uh, Dana and Paula did this naturally last time, and Tina really liked it. When they announce your name, make sure you look at the camera and. Wave, because that was cool. When they announced it. When, they, <laughs> when, <laughs> when that voice from above. I have pronouns and it's not they, <laughs> Joe. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. You know, your hole is so f- deep right now. I'm not, not letting you out of that Still one. Keep that as a blooper at the end. <laughs> <laughs>